Interrelationships among organisms. I can investigate how organisms and populations may compete for abiotic and biotic factors. Starter, based on the weather map, what weather will location A experience in the upcoming days? So here's location A, and you should see there's a frontier and a frontier. This front is a warm front, and that warm front is in moving, it is moving in the direction of those semicircles. Your cold front would be moving in the direction of those spikes. So location A will be experiencing a warm front in the upcoming days, and warm fronts bring warmer temperatures with clouds and rain. Don't think that warm fronts just bring warm weather, uh, it is not clear skies you're going to have clouds and rain because you're having a front where two air masses meet. Read the teak below. It says, I can investigate how organisms and populations in an ecosystem depend on and may compete for biotic and abiotic factors such as quantity of light, water, range of temperature, or soil competi competition. Number one, what do organisms or populations depend on and may compete for? So organisms and populations depend on and may compete for biotic and abiotic factors. What are some abiotic factors that they depend on or may compete for? So organisms may depend or compete for temperature, soil, light, and water. These are abiotic factors, minerals and space as well. Let's go over some vocabulary. Biotic factors are living things. They require energy, nutrients, water, and space. Abiotic factors like light, water, temperature, rocks, wind, atmosphere, soil, those are abiotic, non-living. So these are pointing to your biotic factors in an ecosystem. These are your living things. Your abiotic factors are going to be your non-living things. Levels of organization in an ecosystem. A population is made of individuals that belong to the same species and they live in the same area. So these goldfish would be a goldfish population. They live in the same area. A community is made up of all the populations of species that live in the same area and interact. So here you have the goldfish, the jellyfish, the crab. These are different populations of species interacting in the same area. An ecosystem. An ecosystem is made up of a community of species and their abiotic environment. So now you see the rock and the water as well. These are going to be your abiotic um, things in an ecosystem. So can competition occur in a population? Yes, individuals of the same species may compete for the same resource, food and water and space. Okay, moving forward, let's practice some more. Organisms and population in ecosystems depend on and compete for biotic and abiotic factors. The amount of resources in an ecosystem is limited. What would these two populations be competing for? So you see two different populations. You see the bird and this little um, groundhog. What would they be competing for? Food, right? So they all kind of want that nut that he's eating. Is this nut a biotic or an abiotic factor? Well, since the nut was once living, it would be a biotic factor. Let's watch the what is video to answer the following questions. Hi, I'm 
Emerald Robinson, and in this What Is video, we're going to investigate Earth's ecosystem. An ecosystem is a community of living things interacting with the non-living parts of their environment. There are two primary parts of an ecosystem. The biotic part is made of all the living things, like plants and animals, fungi, and bacteria and viruses. The abiotic part is made up of non-living things, like rocks and minerals, water, and energy. Ecosystems can be almost any size. While most of us think of communities like a coral reef or a forest, an ecosystem can be a small pond or even the area beneath a large rock. Ecosystems need energy. In most cases, this energy comes from sunlight. Producers, like plants, take light energy and convert it into usable sugar energy through photosynthesis. As animals consume the energy from plants, they are eaten by other animals and ultimately decompose back into the soil. The energy moves through the ecosystem via a food web. Two of the most important concepts in the study of ecosystems are niche and habitat. A habitat is a place where an organism lives. Organisms must get nutrition, shelter, water, and the other things they need to survive from their habitat. Niche is an organism's special role in the ecosystem. What and how something eats, how it behaves, where it lives, all of these things define an organism's niche. Two organisms cannot occupy the same niche for very long. Eventually, one will outcompete the other for food and other resources, forcing the other to move or to go extinct. Many of the Earth's ecosystems are threatened due to climate change, pollution, and the human destruction of habitats. Scientists called ecologists study and monitor the health of ecosystems and continually work to discover new ways to protect these precious organisms and environments. So let's answer some questions now. What are two primary parts of an ecosystem? Well, the two primary parts of an ecosystem are going to be your abiotic and your biotic factors. Your biotic factors are the living things in an environment and your abiotic factors are the non-living things like the water, the sunlight, the temperature, the rocks. What are examples of biotic and abiotic factors? Biotic, bio, means living. So biotic factors are going to be anything that's alive or sometimes even once living, like food. So your biotic factors in your environment would be the animals, the living organisms, and plants as well. All plants are living too. Your abiotic factor could be the non-living things. So a meaning non. So your non-biotic factors again, are going to be your rocks, your soil, minerals, uh, sunlight, temperature. What is a habitat? A habitat is a place a or an organism lives, and they find their food, shelter uh, in their habitat. And remember, um, they should be able to find all their needs in a habitat. What is a niche? A niche is an organism or a role uh, a living thing plays. So it's kind of their job in the ecosystem. Okay, so today you have a Schoology assignment and you're going to answer a few questions on ecosystems. So you'll start off with abiotic or biotic factors. Well, I hope that lesson was helpful.